Folks, maybe you know something I don't know, but our price is about to drop. It's something I've been hearing like the last forever years. And uh, I'm just waiting for the next big recession and then I'm gonna buy everything. I'm gonna get some steals of deals. I'm gonna make out like a bandit. Well, as somebody who's pretty closely connected to both sides of that argument, being a consumer and also being a dealer that sells equipment, um, I hate to burst your bubble, but I don't think that's gonna be happening. I mean, it seems that I have in the last couple of years done a lot of buying, right? We moved businesses uh, or locations, business locations. We moved houses and there were things, expenses that we had to buy that we kind of delayed for a while just because we wanted to spread out all the purchases and you know six months later the price climbs again it just keeps happening the same thing happens with um, all the attachments that i sell as well you know every year even pre-pandemic there were price increases two to five percent would be typical you know during the pandemic there were three four five price increases a year and we saw prices go up 50 percent on some things and uh, maybe even more than that on, on other occasions as well just in the last in a four-day time period just last week, uh, we make stump buckets, right? That's an item that we manufacture. I've, I've got a, a fabricator who builds them for me directly. I buy the raw materials and then he builds them. Well, the price went up 45% on raw steel in four days time. And that's expected to just keep climbing and climbing. And so price increases just don't seem to be slowing down. And, and that said, the steel had dropped down from kind of the highest point in the pandemic so it would come down a bit and now it's going back up and part of that's um i think seasonality too as construction seasons really starts to kick into into gear here with the spring and the summer and everything else and demand starts to really heighten um so a little bit of that is is normal to happen but you can you can sure bet that prices aren't going the opposite direction but besides just you know raw steel in that example there's other input costs that have gone up and are not just going back down you know labor costs went way up Okay, <laughs> my son is in high school. He's making over $14 an hour just to stock some shelves at Walmart, okay? And then Menards, just down the road, to push carts, they're paying 17 bucks. When he turns 18, he can go push carts, make 17, $17 an hour to push carts, okay? So labor costs just keep going up and you don't see anybody, I, I'm, I don't hear from my guys, I, it'd be great, if they asked for pay reductions, but nobody's asking for pay reductions. No pay decreases anywhere. Everybody wants to make more money. So that means that all of those manufactured products are also gonna cost more as well. Same thing with utilities. It just kind of flows its way down the pipeline. Building costs, right? Buildings went way up. If you need repairs done, all those kinds of costs go up. And so you're not just gonna magically see everything go the opposite direction. That's just not how it works. And I think if that's the argument you're trying to make, it's a pretty bad one. Now, what I will say is that price increases are normalizing, right? With more of a, in general, a typical once a year type of thing. And with the steel, you kind of level load that, right? We have a lot of steel at cheaper prices. We have, have some at really high prices, you know, it kind of all gets mixed together and we try to level load that as best we can to keep a stable price or minimize price increases. And you're gonna see that kind of across the tractor industry and I think across every industry in general, there's some that are hit harder than others and still recovering. Um, you see, you hear about fertilizer, you still hear about chips. Um, there's still certain food categories I think that are hard to, to recover as well. Went to Chick-fil-A the other day, they didn't have any grilled chicken. They were just none. They're like, nah, we don't have any anymore. So, I, you know, life is still kind of crazy as far as that goes. So the good thing about kind of getting back to the normal you know, this incremental price increase is the fact that it allows for dealers like myself to have a more stable handle on, on what our prices are going to be. And so you can offer more incentives or more fun sales. I mean, it's, it's you know, I like to run a sale now and then and, and have a good time with you guys. And so you can do that knowing that um, you're not going to see these crazy price increases at least in the foreseeable future. So it, it's, it's helping with that. So that's a good thing for the consumer. Um, you're not seeing big, huge jumps anymore like you were in the pandemic. It's getting back to that more stabilized structure that I think we're all accustomed to. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, 
We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of rim guard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at rimguardsolutions.com. But I'm gonna play devil's advocate here as a bit of a dealer, right? But also as a consumer, because this is something that you can grapple with either way of, you know, that man, that recession's coming. It's gonna happen anytime now and I'm gonna get those killer deals when people are unloading their equipment. And yeah, I, I love to think that that's a great mindset to have, right? But in reality, it's <laughs> everything's got to line up just perfectly for you to get that deal. And if everybody's thinking the same thing, then what makes you think you're the smart guy that's going to wind up with the heck of a deal that winds up on Facebook Marketplace? You know, the news has been telling us there's a recession coming, I mean, like for a year and a half, and it just keeps getting delayed. Now it's late 2023, and now it's 2024. It just kicks the can down the road constantly. They don't know what the heck they're talking about. They don't know what they're doing. But I can tell you from reality standpoint, prices continue to go up. And so if you're waiting for another six months, waiting for another year, waiting for another two years for that bottom to fall out, well, all you're doing is letting the prices for new equipment go up higher. And so in one, two years, three years, if it ever even happens, you're basing what you consider a deal off of a even higher new price. And so if you're saving I don't know, 15, 20% off of that new price, that inflated new price because inflation is real. And a, few, and a couple of years from now, you're just getting that for what you could have got it for today, but it's a couple of years down the road. And so you're getting something used, something older, something out of warranty, something maybe that's got some damage to it. You have less time to use it. You delay your projects, all that kind of thing. There's a lot of bad things that are associated with that and delaying that purchase to get your work done now. Now, the good side to all of this uh, inflation, I guess, is the fact that if you have equipment and maybe you're thinking, man, I don't need that anymore. I don't need that tool anymore. I don't need whatever it is anymore. The longer you wait, it seems like the more that those things are going to be sold for. Uh, it's hard to find a lot of used, nice used equipment out there. So folks are, are paying more for that, even used trucks and everything still too. And the tractor world's kind of special. You know, tractors in general, it's they're just an anomaly. There's no blue book for them, but uh, and I've said this before. You can go to like a a 2012 John Deere 3032E, for example. If you say you that's 10 years old, 11 years old, say you had 600 hours on it, I bet you could sell that tractor for more than what you bought it new for 10 or 11 years ago. I mean, tractors just hold their value very well unless you just beat the absolute snot out of them. Same thing goes with attachments, and if you are going to sell your used attachments or your new or your used tractor, I should say, base those off of new pricing. Don't base it off of what you paid for it years ago. See what other equipment that's similar, if the same model still made, like a John Deere 3032E tractor is still manufactured. Well, base your used price for your tractor off of what the brand new prices are right now, not from 10 years ago. And when folks say, you know, that's that's not cool, that tractor is 10 years old or that brush hog's 10 years old. Well, then say, go ahead, go ahead, find one somewhere else that's a lot cheaper. But why would I, as a seller, take money out of my own pocket? I'm going to try to get as much as I possibly can for it. And so I think that's what most consumers are going to do, whether they're buying or selling. They're going to look. And so I, I get it. I get the mindset of I'm going to wait for that bottom to drop and I'm going to get a deal. But I'm here to tell you that doesn't work out very often. And normally that's hindsight is 2020, right? You don't know how low of a price you could possibly get until that time has already passed. And you're just maybe hoping and guessing and wishing that you got a good deal on something and you don't really know if you did or not. You know, I look at land a lot. I love looking at property, what's for sale and everything else. And all I can think of so many parcels around here that I thought, man, that'd be a, that'd be a good deal to own. But you know, I don't know, maybe the price will drop a little bit and you can go back and look, there's houses. My, my wife and I have looked at, walked through, thought we should buy, all sorts of things. And you look and see years later how much those are selling for now after somebody else bought it, moved in, and then put it back on the market. And prices just, I mean, they're 50% more, they're 100% more, depending on how long ago it was. Prices just historically go up and up and up. And yeah, there's small, small, small windows of time when you could potentially find a deal. But more often than not, it seems like it's just justification not to buy something, which is perfectly fine. But if you're trying to find that heck of a deal on something, you could be waiting forever. Now, while 
I think that more dealers, more everybody everywhere is getting better on having inventory on hand. The market has softened a little bit. It hasn't gone, it's not still crazy like it was during the pandemic, but it is still a very strong market. Um, but myself included and other dealers have been able to order well enough in advance now, right? Nine months in advance, a year in advance, whatever you need to, to try to get that inventory and have it on hand. This is like our third or fourth year in a row doing all of this. And so you kind of have a pattern down, but lead times are still, I just got the notification that I have to have my snow pusher order in uh, for next fall by April 15th. That's their, that's their drop dead cutoff. They tried to make it March 15th. We had to have our snow pusher order in for next fall. So lead times are still really long as far as that goes. Other manufacturers that we're working with, I mean, the flail mowers that are just coming in this spring, we ordered those last summer, okay? So like nine months ago, whatever the heck that was. Lead times are still long. You can't just say, hey, I wanna get one of these and guarantee you're gonna have it. And some of our stuff is made to order. And those lead times over the winter were down to two to four weeks. Now they're back up to seven to 10 weeks and probably gonna grow even more as that spring demand continues to, to you know, do what it does every year. So. Wearing my dealer hat right now. Well, this isn't a dealer hat, but metaphorically speaking, I'd encourage you to buy your attachments right now and probably buy them from goodworkstractors.com because we include free shipping, rewards, and financing too, okay? So we have good deals. Go to our website, see what you want for your front end loader, for your three-point hitch. We'd love to help you out. And if you don't own a tractor yet, well, we've been driving this Summit tractor around for just about a year now, not quite, and we're loving it, okay? And so these are gonna be available fairly soon across most of the country, all right? They're expanding incrementally in a controlled way. The Summit comes with a lot of things standard that other tractor manufacturers don't, including these R14 tires, liquid ballast inside those tires, a third function up front, a rear remote in the back, a high back suspension seat. The list just goes on and on. Oh, and we just got this canopy installed too. This is the Rhino Hide Canopy. Get that from tractorcanopy.com. I think you guys get the idea. And on that note, if you enjoyed today's video, you want to see more stuff about tractors, kind of business related things too. I like talking about that sometimes. Hit that subscribe button down below. It's completely free. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.